Welcome back to The Painting Coach and in this video we're going to be painting a Death Watch Kill Team Veteran. Okay here we go, so the first thing uh, we've done, now, I've already done it off camera, you can see it here on my palette, is that I've given it a, an all over coat of a bad and black, fairly thin down, just to make sure that the uh, the tone of the armour, if I need to make any repairs, uh, I can match it. So we're going to go with Iron Hand Steel to start. I've just thinned this down a little bit on, on the palette. And essentially what we're looking for is we're going to cover all the silver parts. So we've got the silver arm on the, the left hand side that we need to do. So uh, this should cover fairly well. Just make sure that you move the brush through it and keep keep it moving round so that you don't uh, you don't get any big piles of it anywhere. We've also got some other areas we want to do, like the vents or the exhausts rather on the backpack. We've got some little bits of uh, piping. We've got the combat blade on the back here. So I'm just kind of working it round and and just showing you very quickly some of the areas I'm going to cover with the iron hand steel. And of course we've got the weapon as well. So uh, we've got the the magazine to do we've got the workings of the gun as well so just work your way around get that all covered with the iron hand seal if you're not sure please do check the box art and then we'll come back and uh, we'll shade it next just before we get off and uh, start shading the model I realized that actually the um, the weapons can be shaded the same as the silver so just take some corn red and i've just put a little bit of water in to thin it down a little um, and in terms of this we're just going to paint the weapon casing um, as well as the just the handle on the combat blade there so just work your way around this don't worry if you're a little bit messy when you come to some of the iconography there because we're going to paint that gold later just make sure that you don't flood the area with too much paint work this corn red all over uh, the gun casing and the other thing we want to do as well is we want to draw or we want to paint rather a straight line down the right knee pad so all i'm doing is i'm just center line then another line equidistant to the other side and fill that in and then that's the squad number goes goes over there so get all that done get it painted with the corn red um, and any cabling that you like so there's a little bit of cabling here I might do with corn red and then we'll come back and we'll shade everything next once that's all dry we're going to shade it with some null oil straight from the pot and we're just popping this on and so you can see there on the shoulder guard for example it brings out all that detail really nicely so all we're doing is just working our way around, giving it a little bit of a shade. We're making sure that it doesn't settle uh, in recesses too much. And we want to make sure that we do the, the gun casing as well. So just brush it on all over the bits that you've already painted. So all silver and all that corn red. When it comes to that knee pad, you might just want to just shade the bottom a little bit like that. And as it dries, it'll add you some nice shadow so get that done let it dry and we'll come back and highlight the silver next once we're happy that the null oil is dry i just want to go back to this iron hand steel a little bit just take as much of it off the brush as you can and then what we want to do with it i just want to kind of area highlight the raised areas just to add some of that shine back in over the uh null oil shading that we've put down so this is going to be really subtle, it's not going to be very heavy at all. So just work your way around, adding it in where you want. Um, and really, we'll just probably leave it there. It's not. This isn't a huge step. I just want to bring some brightness back to, to some of these areas. And here, for example, on the combat blade, that part that's facing up will get a bit more light than the bit underneath. So just work your way around doing that. Do as much as you can. Clean off some of this mess you may have made with the null oil on some of the shinier areas that you want and then we'll come back and put a, a shiny highlight next so the color we're going to use for the shiny highlight is as ever chrome from Vallejo Model Air so again don't thin it down too much on the palette because it's already thin it's designed for an airbrush so just get a little bit on your brush and what we're looking to do is catch those raised edges 
just pull the brush along them. Similar for things like the power nodes, we can uh, pull the brush along there. When it comes to the, the shiny silver, we can get that whole part of the shoulder guard covered, but we can also get a nice line to follow. And similarly on the weapon as well, we can get follow that uh, the shape of the model as much as we can with that. When it comes to the lettering, this is going to be a little more difficult. But all we need to do is just get a little bit on your brush and then wipe your brush. Just wipe it over a little bit of um, tissue. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pick a direction. And I'm going to highlight in that direction, just catching the top of those letters. So just be really softly, uh, soft rather, when you, when you come to the model. Because you want to pick out these letters. You don't want to flood the area. You don't want to flood the amount of uh, detail that you've you kind of created there. So work your way around, get all those edges done, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to do uh, the blue shine on the silver. Well, actually, no, we won't do the blue shine next. We'll do the rest of the model first. We'll do the gold next. We'll do the blue shine last because actually we're going to do some effects, some power effects on the sword that we need to do some other steps uh, first. So let's start the gold next. So I'm going to use a little bit of Retribute Armor and I've just thinned it with a little bit of water and you see I've not got too much on it because there's not a huge amount of gold on here. Uh, but essentially we're looking at these areas uh, around the model. So we've got the, the sword hilt. So just take your time around that silver that you've already finished. And you can see that the Retribute covers fairly, uh, fairly nicely. Um, we've also got a lot of iconography. So... Um, we've got the eye on the chest. We've also got these shells, which we kind of want to get covered off as well. Just take your time. Try and catch the raised edges because there's quite a lot of detail uh, on the model. Let's just try and catch those raised edges as you work through it. Um, and then we've got some iconography on the leg as well. We want to get the, the barrel of this multi-melted done. With retro drama so you can see it's not covering so well over such a big area of black so you may need to just go in and give that a second coat but just work your way all the way around get all those gold bits done and then we'll come back and shade it once that gold is dry we'll give it a little bit of a shade with some reitland flesh shade now be a little careful when you're applying this especially around the black armor because even though it's black it will maybe stain uh, some of the armour if we spill over, so it's not an issue if we do, because we can just go back in and touch it up. Um, but just, sorry, I'm just waiting for the camera to focus there to make sure we can see this. Uh, just work around all the gold and cover it up with some Reichland Flesh Shade. Now, what I'm going to do as well is once this Reichland Flesh Shade's dry, that's when I'm going to go back in and fix any mistakes that I may have made. So if I've accidentally uh, put too much gold on or I've spilt gold, once this is dry, I'm going to go in and fix those mistakes because I can then highlight it with confidence and just use a bad and black to fix it. So work your way around, get that done, and I'm going to fix the mistakes off cam. We'll come back and highlight it next. The colour I'm going to use to highlight the gold is Liberator Gold. And I've got it on the palette here. It's actually uh, neat and not thinned it down because it is quite thin anyway. Just make sure you've got a nice tip on your brush. Um, and essentially what we're going to do is we're looking to kind of catch edges and highlight top end, top edges where we can. Um, so we're just looking to catch some of the raised areas on some of the, the iconography that we've got all over the model. Now, it's quite difficult to show on cam because obviously the model's quite small. And I want to make sure that it's in focus as well for you. So... Just trying to catch those top edges, those bottom edges, leaving the uh, shade just in the recess. Same with these shells, just to give them that kind of brighter colour gold. So work your way around the model, getting that uh, highlight on. Take your time because you don't want to, like I said, you don't want to make any mistakes. If you do, you can just touch up with whatever colour uh, you've gone over. And then we'll come back and that's the metallics mainly done. So I think we'll have a have a highlight of the red next. And one other thing I did do, I did do the purity seal wax uh, in that corn red as well. And we'll come back and we'll do all the red highlights next. So let's get that red highlighted. The first colour we're going to use is some of this corn red. 
You can see the benefit of having a wet palette. So again, I'm using my red grass games uh, wet palette. And essentially what we want to do on this red is we want to uh, line highlight it. Let's check we're in focus again. Just want to line highlight everything. Fairly chunky highlights. I'm not being too careful with this. And the reason is we're going to give it a, a much sharper highlight later. And this just helps accentuate some of the, the kind of the lines and the colour. And also some of the shading that we've got in there because of the uh, the null oil wash. So just work your way around all the bits that you've painted uh, corn red. Just give them that nice line highlight and we'll come back with a sharper highlight next. Okay, so that last edge highlight of um, red is going to be Wazdaka red. And I've probably thinned it down. Uh, probably just one to one with water. Now again, really key that we've got a good point on our brush to make it easier to kind of do these highlights so essentially what we're looking to do here is we're looking to catch those edges again just this time we're using a much brighter color so take your time again on this and just work it up and down just catching those edges to give us a nice a brighter red like that where you've got the little bit of cable here yeah, it's nice and simple you can catch that edge and then for the purity seal just dot around it there and just draw a line across the top of the knee pad there just to highlight the top so there we are that's i'm going to finish that side and then we'll come back and we'll move on to the leather next so first base color for the leather is going to be rhinox hide um, the reason i'm going for rhinox hide is because the armor is going to be kind of a cold black so we want to contrast that a little bit the way we'll do that is with a, a warm brown so just base all the, the leather areas all the packs and straps with some rhinox hide of course be careful where you've already finished painting and then we'll come back and we'll start to highlight it next. Uh, just one word on the shoulder pad. So I'm going to paint this guy as a raptor. I think that's one of the big attractions of the uh, of the Death Watch is the fact that there's different chapters um, all coming together for the common good, and they've all got their own kind of chapter pads there. And I thought I'll do a raptor. Now, if you're wondering how to paint various different Space Marine chapters, don't worry. I'll put a link up the top now that you can have a look at which will show you how to paint loads of different Space Marines. So if you're not sure how to do it, that link is there, and that covers pretty much every colour under the sun. To highlight the brown, we're going to use Doom Bull Brown with a thick edge highlight, and then we're going to use Scrag Brown as kind of a thinner one. So if you just, I'll just show you on the, the straps on the front, because it'll just be quicker. So what we're doing is just trying to catch those wide, wider highlights on the edges across the top there. Just like that. So as that dries, it will kind of blend in to the model quite nicely. And what we'll do is we'll clean the brush off, and then we're going to take some scrag brown. Make sure that you haven't got anything about to drip off, like I did then. Now with the scrag brown, you want very little on your brush again. What we're looking to do with this is we're looking to use this right on the edges there. Just like that. And the same on both sides, really, just to catch it and pull those sharp corners out just across the top there. And that gives you a nice, nice warm brown, which will contrast really nice with the cold black we'll be doing. So do that on all the packs and we'll come back. Um, and I think we'll we'll probably do the purity seal next, um, then the lenses, and then we'll do the black armor last. First off, we're going to base the purity seal with some Rakarth flesh. Now, if that looks a little thick, that's because it is. I've not mixed it with any water. That's straight off the palette, or straight out of the pot, I should say. And this should cover in just about one coat. So, there you are. You can see that's covered really nicely in just about one coat. So, just make sure you've got all of it. Let that dry, and then we'll come back and we'll shade it next. Um, and we'll also do a bit more work on that barrel as well. So to shade this purity seal, it's going to take a little bit of our Grax Earth shade and just work it over like that. And I've not used too much on there, and I don't want 
to have too much settling on there so that's okay like that and the other thing i want to do is just take in i just want to paint it over this barrel just to give a darkened effect and then depending on how this turns out and how dark you want it you can put some null oil right towards the kind of the tip of the nozzle and i might do that uh, but i'm just going to focus on the agrax for now we we'll nearly call it devlan mud then which <laughs> was uh, was a long time ago and just the thing to think about when you stand the model up like that 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 agrax is going to run towards the the kind of the casing which we don't really want we want main up there so just let it dry on its side so that the uh, the weapon is facing down something like that and then once that's dry we'll come back um and i think we'll we'll go on to the the lenses next moving on to the lenses and the eyes we'll use some corax white now I thinned it down because Corax White is really thick, so it's probably a little bit more than one to one, a little bit more water than I would normally. Again, you want to get a good point on your brush, and all we're going to do is we're going to paint all the lenses with Corax White just like that. Really nice and easy, really straightforward. Um, so there's a few lenses. Now I'm going to take a little bit more off my brush because what I want to do is I want to paint the power node on the power sword uh, and the other thing I want to do as well I want to just kind of draw some jagged thin jagged lines going back to that that power note and the reason is that'll just help us when it comes to kind of painting the sword to get a little bit of a, uh, a kind of electrical glow out of it so do that on both sides make sure you get all the lenses and the eye lens and then we'll come back and uh, we'll colour them all in. When we're happy that that uh, Corax white is dry, we'll just take some Blood Angels red contrast paint. Now really key here that you don't have too much on your brush. Just paint it over the lens and just drag it down towards that bottom corner a little bit. If you're not sure which lenses are red, just check the box arcs. It's pretty clear on there. And obviously the eyes on the helmet are as well. And you see that gives you a nice kind of glowing effect on the eye as well. So uh, there's a few buttons on this side as well, which I'll do. And then let that dry. And then we'll do the black armor next before we drop back to do the rest of the lenses. Uh, or sorry, this lens here, as well as the power effect on the sword. The first thing to do, which is really important if you haven't already done so, is go back over the model and make sure that you fix any mistakes you've made. So just take that a bad and black and just paint it over. So I've already done that, a few little tweaks here or there. So I'm gonna put the first highlight color down. Now this is Dark Reaper. And in terms of my paint consistency, this is probably one to one and not too much on the brush. And we're looking to just catch all those sharp edges of the model. Now this is a slightly thicker highlight, uh, but that doesn't mean we don't wanna be as tidy as we can with it so work your way around the model and catch as many edges as you can because that's going to make your life uh, a lot easier um, because it gives you a nice sharp line and where you can you may have to rotate the model uh, constantly just to kind of catch those edges and get those lines but it's well worth it so work your way all the way around the model catch all those edges We'll get the backpack as well, and then we'll come back for our next final highlight next. The next uh, highlight we're going to go for is Thunderhawk Blue, and again, just a little bit of water in there to thin it down. Um, and you really want hardly any on your brush at all for this. And we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did uh, previously. We're just going to catch those same edges that we'd already done with the uh, Dark Reaper, except what we're looking to do is just catch slightly less because uh, that gives us a much sharper edge uh, on the on the armor which really helps set it off there so again we're looking to just catch the same edges that we've we've done previously just checking we're in focus again focus seems to be a little hit or miss recently for some reason uh, and then we'll work our way around the model get that done and we'll come back for just one final extreme highlight on the armor and so the last colour for the armour is going to be Fenrisian Grey. So again, fairly thin, and again, you want hardly anything on your brush for this. 
so we're just looking for those most prominent sharp edges now so just along there and you can see this color is quite a bit brighter so it's really important that we use it just sparingly to pick out those absolutely sharpest edges um, that we've got on the model so just work your way around like I said use it very sparingly just on the sharpest edges perhaps where you've got some corners popping out like that and then that's pretty much everything done we've just got some lenses and the power sword and also that kind of blue hint on the silver arm to do so the color we're going to use for the lenses is is ethermatic blue and i've got it on the palette now for this part here i'm just going to fill that with ethermatic blue um basically straight from the pot and the the reason that that is is because it's quite a quite a dark or turquoisey color that we want for like the, the lens as well on there so it's gonna paint that like that and leave it there now for the sword and for the arm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of that ethermatic blue and I haven't thinned it I'm just making sure I haven't got hardly any of it on my brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint down towards the bottom of all the silver now you could probably see there's hardly anything coming off and that's fine that's what we want because what we're going to do is we're going to slowly build this up and we're building up towards the bottom because we just want a hint of blue just a hint so I just need to put a little more on the palette again this is a nice easy step so just painting down towards the bottom just building up a hint of blue just a hint not more than that and then for the power sword what we're going to do is I'm going to paint this along the, the node on both sides I'm also going to paint the power sword with it uh, in general what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep building this up on the power sword so that it kind of starts to cover these white marks we've put on there and it gives us a nice crackle effect or crackle glow effect I should say okay so we're pretty done. much uh, we've just done. got one last thing to do take some white uh, scar and I've left this neat on the palette and I've left this neat on the palette and all I'm going to do thin down and, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch nodes. it over things like the power nodes just to kind of get that extra glow just to kind of get that extra glow the top of the, and then the just lenses. in the top of the the lenses just to give it a little bit of a just to give it a little bit of a reflection reflection just to help with the believability just to help so there we are the that's the model done you can go off so there we are that's the model done you can go off and base him chuck a squad we'll number on the knee next. and then we'll see him on the turntable next so there we have it, this Death Watch Kill Team veteran is done and ready to join his brothers on the battlefield to slay the Xenos. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me improve the channel for you guys. Hopefully this is a really easy set of techniques that if you've got a few Death Watch guys or just a couple of squads, you'll be able to knock them out really, really quickly. If you want to help support the channel, then you can do using the links in the description. There's a link to my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me, exclusive content, as well as monthly frequently asked questions and a soon-to-be-arriving Discord channel. You can use the link for Goblin Gaming to get up to 20% off all your wargaming needs, and you can also see some of my recommended equipment on Amazon. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.